Hello, I'm Ms. Lemley of Finextra, and we're here at EBA Day in Amsterdam. And today I'm talking to Michelle Sakin of HSBC, and we're going to talk a little bit about treasury transformation for treasurers. So, um, what sort of customer trends are you seeing currently? Well, since the end date came into force last year, actually customers now have the time uh, to look at the benefits of SEPA because up to the end date, they were very much focused on meeting that timeline and being phased in phase with the, the end date regulation. Now is the time for these customers to revisit their organizations and to see to what extent they can actually may reap the benefits of the standards of SEPA, um, put into place that wonderful concept but to a certain extent we'll have to talk about it in a few moments on one account does it all, but what does it mean from a rationalization point of view for customers on, on accounts and what does it mean on centralization and what kind of centralized structures do you want to put in place. So there's a lot of discussion with customers that will come to us and that will start saying I've got all these accounts in Europe what can I do to reorganize this? What's the best approach? Should I be closing all of my accounts? Are there niche products somewhere? Do I need to know about tax regulations for um, making payments locally? Do I need to keep accounts? So it's a very interesting time for a lot of corporates because although SEPA is not completely harmonized yet, it's gone a long way because of the implementation of the standard ISO XML format. Um, but to a great extent, um, corporates still need to maintain in certain uh, extent accounts locally yet they can start optimizing and streamlining their organizations and I guess that's the that's the interesting aspect um, to to what we're seeing today so customers are looking at whether or not to put in place centralized structures payment factories shared service centers um, and and uh, and basically in-house banks. To what extent they will go all the way to centralization and should they be making payments on behalf and what are the benefits to their corporate structure. And I think it's very important to understand where the customer is coming from and what is his end target that he wants to achieve because obviously there are costs to the benefits that he is looking to reap. So we need to be very careful that um, when we have these discussions with our customers that we are supporting our customers in this very open dialogue of what are the different options available to him on the basis of his corporate structure within the European landscape which as we know today with SEPA has made centralization possible because equally the XML format within Europe allows for data population and notably for the ultimate debtors and ultimate creditors to be populated, fields that are within the XML format. Now we don't want to get too technical, but the fact that this information can be transported end-to-end -end is really very interesting and very um, um, beneficial to corporates who can then use this information for reconciliation purposes. So today there is a real trend towards revisiting the organization, streamlining um, processes, seeing where operational gains can be put in place. And once that's been put in place, then there's a working capital angle that comes into play that we should equally uh, understand. Because when we're talking to treasurers today, their concept is not just managing payments and collections. Now that's one part. They're accountable also today for the supply chain. What are they doing on the supplier side? What are they doing on the receivable side? And how can they best manage that so that they equally optimize for their organization the working capital. So, I mean, I, I think it was interesting that you talked about um, that the industry had been so focused on meeting the end dates for SEPA and we're now in, in the SEPA era and, and many are starting now to realize some of the benefits of this harmonization. But on all the sort of customer trends you outlined, you know, what are some of the challenges that the industry is facing in realizing some of those? Well, the challenges is that the concept of one account does it all is actually not, not so easy to put into place depending on the countries in which the customers are doing their business. And it may not be what the customers really should be doing for different reasons. So to a certain extent, um, the harmonization still needs a few more chapters before we get to one level playing field all the way around. But once you said that, there, there are 
certain payments and collections that will be centralized, which are the SCTs and STD. And then on the local level, there may be need to maintain accounts um, because there are local payment types that need to be used and that you can't just walk away from one day to the next and not use them anymore. So to a certain extent, that's a real challenge. But also, when you look at revisiting your, your procedures um, and putting in place a centralized structure, it's understanding what that means from a change management point of view. What resources do you need, need to put in place? What IT changes do you need to put in place? What about the connectivity? Will that have to change? You realize that the fact that uh, moving from multi-bank connectivity to fewer connectivities with banks or using multi-bank connectivity like SwiftNet may be beneficial, but still, there may be some underlying cost from moving from your point of today to that next step. So those are the things that the corporate needs to take into play before he, em he embarks in this, in this project, which above all is a transverse project. So he needs to understand where his organization is coming from and what it is he wants to put in the centralized um, body that he will put in place, be it a shared service center or just a payment factory uh, making, uh, preparing the files. So it's understanding what's the scope, what are the countries or entities that he wants to put in that centralized structure, should it be phased, does he need to go all the way to the centralized structure or should he have a partially centralized set structure with some local accounts and, and entities still managing their accounts locally. It's really understanding what his corporate needs are and how the banking partner is going to be able to support him in his target operating model. So you talked a lot about centralization. What are some of the next steps to achieve that? For me, I think um, the next steps and where we see customers asking us a lot of questions these days is, all right, we've looked at the payment side to a great extent. What are we going to do on the receivable side? Because for a corporate today, the issues he may be facing, or the challenges if you want, is he needs to reconcile his incoming flows. Very important for him to know, um, where is my cash? When can I use it uh, to make it simple? So what he's looking for is for his banking partners to find solutions for him to have more information, more and I, I understand we're using the word real time quite a bit these days, but <laughs> it's the word of the moment. <laughs> it's the word of the moment, but real time to, this, to the extent of, okay, providing him with the information of where are these incoming flows, how they can match with his invoices. And so I think the trend that we're going to see and the expectations from the customers is that, is that they be supported um, on, on the receivable sides, because once you've put a centralized structure in place, it's actually much easier to have a more global view again of the supply chain is not only on the trade aspects but on the payments and collection sides. And also I'd like to come back on the STD because let's not forget that the STD is a scheme that is cross-border and to a certain extent customers who may not have used um, collections in the legacy world may today look at the STD as an option to centralizing and having a better control and visibility on their cash once they have of course negotiated with their customers <laughs> to accept being collected on through STDs. So I see that as a major trend coming across the line.